Upon arriving in Panama, I quickly realized that I needed to acclimate before going to the jungle. I decided that over the next few days, I would do some touring by foot. First stop, the Museum of Tourism, which was closed. Then on to a monument dedicated to Dr. Arnulfo Arias. Next, Panama Viejo. If you get a chance to get to Panama, don't miss out on Panama Viejo. It is the remaining part of old Panama City and former capital of the country. Throughout the 17th century, Panama Viejo had been attacked by pirates, destroyed by an earthquake, and devastated by fire. Together with the historical district of Panama, it forms a World Heritage Site. Then on to a statue of Belisario Porras, a journalist, a politician, and a three-term president of Panama. A church on Avenida Central, a church that I would see several times again, riding on the bus. And finally, a religious statue in the park, where I took a few minutes for myself. I had done an inventory before departing the United States, but I felt I should do one more since checking in my bags at the airport, especially since I had no real way of securing my bags. When deciding what to bring with me to Panama, I used my experience I had gained from being in the United States Army for 23 years. Three of those years and several deployments were spent in the jungles of Panama, Honduras, Thailand, and the Philippines. I felt I had a good working knowledge of what to bring with me, although it had been a few years since doing anything like this. If nothing else, I wanted to take care of my hygiene, which meant my feet and my teeth. Also, some first aid supplies. In the jungle, a simple scratch could turn into a major problem. Other items I needed were mosquito repellent, knives, binoculars, mosquito net, poncho, and my survival guide. Oh, and my guerrilla warfare and special forces manual. Well, folks, here I am. I'm back at my room. Now, so far, I have uh, toured a little bit. I have eaten some local food, and I have uh, kind of just walked around and got familiar with the area. Uh, today, now I'm going to shave and call my friend Ruben, the taxi driver, where he will give me a ride over to what used to be Fort Kobe and Howard Air Force Base. So the next time you see me, hopefully I will be in the jungle. I took a taxi to my drop-off point, located west of the Bridge of the Americas. I decided for my first excursion I would go somewhere familiar. The road I am walking on used to lead to a dead end, but more than a decade ago the U.S. Army completed the road so traffic could go, could go directly to Veracruz, rather than driving through the military base. Eventually I will be on the backside of Howard Air Force Base and Fort Kobe, where I was assigned to in 1981. Well, this is where I'm at. I've walked for about uh, two miles now, and uh, it's around 4 p.m. And since I couldn't uh, stay where I wanted to stay, I have finally found some place where I can bed down for the night. Uh, I want to get in here and get my hooch set up before it gets uh, too dark and um, get something to eat and uh, get a good night's sleep. So with that in mind, let's go. This is a path I kind of cut prior to uh, bringing you in here. Um, and it pretty much ends right here. So, from this point on, um, I gotta break my way through. As you can see, there's a few crab holes here, which means um, I may need to ensure that all my gear is uh, stashed away tonight. If not, then uh, the crabs may just come and uh, take my watch and uh, whatever else I have laying around gone. Now this looks like uh, a pretty good place. Uh, I'm going to clear the uh, floor out and get rid of any roots and uh, stumps and stuff that's gonna, uh, I'm going to have to sleep on. And uh, I'm behind this log 
and I'm only about uh, 50 meters off the road, so I should be okay. Well, here I am. I finally made it to the uh, site, as you can see. Uh, got my floor cleared, and uh, well, the first thing I look for is any kind of uh, bodies of water, i.e. little canals going through here. I wouldn't want to um, kind of sleep somewhere where if it does rain that much, uh, I'll get washed away. Now when I go to uh, set up my poncho hooch, this is my uh, tent per se, I don't want to um, tie it to any trees that may have any type of ants running up and down it. And although there may not be any now, uh, early in the morning there will be. So let me look for that and then we'll get started. As you can see here, I've got uh, started on my poncho hooch, uh, getting that set up. Now you may ask me, huh, it's Panama and this is the dry season. Why are you setting up a poncho? Well, I'll tell you what, it's rained two times in one day here. And granted, this is Panama and this is supposed to be the dry season. Well, it's not dry. With the global warming the way it is, they have problems down here with the rain. Well, as you can see, all these ants, these ants would tear me up if they got a hold of me. That's exactly what I was talking about. Be careful of the tree that you use. Uh, when I put my uh, bungee cord on the tree, I think I kind of startled them a little bit. And now, hopefully, they will not uh, eat me alive. As you can see, they haven't come down to my bungee cord yet, but... They are all over the place. Maybe I'll spray it down with some uh, bug juice. Well, that's it. That's where I'll be sleeping tonight. That white thing uh, will hopefully keep most of the um, mosquitoes off of me. And because this is a wet place over here, it's prone to more mosquitoes. Anyways, gonna grab something to eat and uh, relax a little bit before bedtime. Well, when all else fails, you can always eat spam in a package. Now I've never seen this before. I have seen spam although I've never seen it in individual packets like this. So um, that's dinner.